Okay, so Dog Song, Chapter 5. Shamans had great power in the old times before the church came. They could make stones talk in the snow. And I knew one once that had two heads that talked to each other. They fought all the time, those two heads. And finally it was said that one of the heads told the body to kill the other. This it did, and of course that made the whole body die. Shamans had great power, but they weren't always smart. Well, that's an old woman's memory. Russell had moved away from, from life in the village, but he was not rebelling. He was working towards something in his mind, not away from something he didn't like. He had moved in with Ugruk, but his father knew it and approved. There was school, of course. He was not going to school, but he was learning, and everybody knew that. It would have been hard to stop him trying to learn what he wanted and needed to know, and so nobody tried. It would have been not, not have been polite to try it, and many consider Russell old enough to know what he was doing. Life in the village went on as it had before. Men took snow machines out on the ice to find seals when they could get through the leads. Other hunters took other snow machines back into the hills and found caribou, sometimes killing six or seven to bring back for other people who could not hunt. In the long darkness, house life took on a meaning that couldn't exist in the summer. Families sometimes moved in with each other for a time, played games, fought the boredom that could come with a semi-arctic night. The village had a game room with a television, and it was usually crowded with both adults and children watching the outside world. All but Russell and Ugruk. Russell hunted caribou twice more, but didn't get any meat either time. He saw them at a distance, but couldn't get the sled close enough to make a stalk and a kill. On the second attempt, he set the hook, left the dogs with the bow, worked up some small creek beds, but the deer saw him before he could get close enough for a shot. He took rabbits and ptarmigan home each time, using a small net Ugruk had fashioned and showed him how to use. With the net, laying it on the ground and using a long line, he lured the birds with a handful of berries. When they were on the net, he flicked it close with a jerk of his wrist and caught five or six birds at a time. So he made meat, light meat, that's what Ugruk called it, and it was good meat as far as it went. The small birds tasted sweet and were tender and soft, which suited Ugruk's poor teeth. But the dogs needed heavy meat, heavy red meat, and fat, or they could not work, could not run long and hard, and heavy meat meant deer, caribou, or seal. So it came on a cold, clear morning that Russell decided to go out for seal again. It was still dark when he awakened and sat up on the floor but before he could get his pants on, Ugrik was sitting up and had lighted the lamp. It is time for me to go out with, for seals again. For food for the dogs, I will go out on the ice. Ugrik nodded. Yes, yes, I know that. But this time, I will go with you. Russell stopped, his bearskin pants halfway up. He looked at the old man. To hunt seals? That and other things. There are certain things that must be done at this time, and it is for an old man to do them when the time is right. Russell waited, but Ugruk said nothing further. Instead, he stood, slightly stiff, and feeling with his hands, found clothes on the side wall. He dressed in pants and mucklucks and another squirrel skin under Parker. Parker. Then he took down an older outer parka of deer skin, one with holes and worn places, and shrugged it on over his head. I have the good parka, Russell said. Let me give it to you. Russell shook his head. Ugruk shook his head. Not this time. You keep it. You will need it, and I won't. Go now and harness the dogs. Russell finished dressing and went out for the team. They knew him now, knew him well, and greeted him with tails and barks when they saw him take the harness off the pegs. He laid the gang line out under the snow and harnessed the team quickly, wondering why the old man wanted to go. When the dogs were harnessed, he took the weapons, two harpoons and one killing lance with a plain sharpened point, and tied them into the sled. When he turned back to the house, Ugruk had come out of the door and was looking across the ice. His milk-white eyes stared across the ice, but he was seeing nothing. Or, Russell thought, maybe he was seeing everything. I smell the sea out there, Ugruk said. It is not too far today. The ice lets the smell come across. The dogs are harnessed. I know. Would you drive them? No, I will ride. Put me in the sled and you drive. Russell took his hand and put him in the sled, settling him back against the cross pieces at the back. 
When Ubrick was settled, Russell pulled the hook and called the dogs up. They tore away from the building and out across the ice. When he was away on the ice and the fire was burned out of them a bit, he dragged the brake down and slowed them and looked out back at the village. Small gray buildings in caches on the dirty snow of the beach, with people here and there. Someone he did not recognize waved at him and he waved back. Dirty smoke came from chimneys and slid off from the wind and he watched as they moved away, picked up speed on the clean ice snow until he rounded the point heading north and the buildings were gone. He waited for some kind of sadness to come, but it did not, did not, and he turned back to the sled and the dogs lined out in front and he moved them over to the right a little, using a soft gee to let them know it was a gentle turn. The sea was a blue line on the horizon and they crossed the high points and could see ahead. Ugrek said nothing, but when they got within a couple of miles of the sea and the spray smell was heavy in the cold air, he held up his mitten hand to a signal a halt. There will be seals. Watch for seals. His voice was excited, hushed but alive. They will be on the edge of the ice. Watch for them. Russell looked out on the edge of the ice but saw no seals. The light was half gone now, and he knew that he would have to leave the sled to hunt. I will leave you with the dogs and go out on the foot. But now Ugrek shook his head. No, no, it's time to talk one more time and I must leave you. But I wanted to come out here for it because I missed the smell of the sea. I wanted to smell the sea one more time. Russell looked down in the sled at the old man. You're leaving me? But yes, but first I must tell you what to do. Where are you going? It is time to leave, Ugrick said simply. It is my time. But there is a time you must, there is a thing you must do now to become a man. You must not go home. Not go home, I do not understand. You must leave with the dogs, run long and find yourself. When you leave me, you must head north and take meat and see the country. When you do that, you will become a man. Run as long as you can. That's what used to be. Once I ran for a year to find good bird's eggs. Run with the dogs and become what the, with, what the dogs will help you become. Do you understand? Russell remembered how when Ugrick had said he would take a long journey, he spoke quietly. I think so, but you, what are you to do? You will leave me here on the ice, out here by the edge of the sea. With respect, Grandfather, I can't do that. There is a doctor. Things can be done if something is bothering you. Ugrick shook his head. An old man knows when death is coming, and he should be left to his own on it. You will leave me here on the ice. But you will leave me here on the ice. Russell said nothing. He didn't help Ugrek, but the old man got out of the sled himself. When he was standing on the ice, he motioned Russell away. Go now. Russell couldn't. He held back, held the sled. I will stay with you. You will go. The milk eyes looked through him to the sea, to the snow, to the line of blue that was the sky. You will go now. And there was such strength in his voice that Russell knew he must go. He took the handlebar in one hand and pulled the hook, and the dog surged away, and Russell let them run without looking back. He went mile after mile and finally he could stand it no more and he called the team around and headed back, his eyes scanning the ice and sweeps as they ran. When they were still half a mile from where Ugrick had gotten off, Russell could see a small figure sitting on the ice and he smiled. He would talk the old man into riding back to the village. That's all there was to it. The old man would come back and tell him more about living the old way, would sit at night and tell the stories that made the winter nights short. But when he drew close, he saw that Ugrick was sitting still, very still. His hands were folded in his lap, and his legs were stretched out in front of him, and the eyes were open and not blinking with life. Russell stopped the team before the dogs were close to Ugruk and walked ahead on foot. Ugruk did not turn his head, but stared out to sea, out past the edge of ice where his spirit had flown, out and out. His face was already freezing, and there was some blown snow in the corner of his eyes that didn't melt. Russell brushed the snow away with his mitten. A small gesture he made unknowingly, and a place in him wanted to smile, and another place wanted to cry. You left too soon, Grandfather. I was coming back for you. He stood for a time looking down at the dead old man. Then he thought of something, and he went back to the sled and took the small harpoon with the ivory targo point from the weapon's lashing. He put the harpoon across Ugrek's lap so that it balanced on his knees. You will want to hunt seals. Use it well and make much sweet meat. Then he went to the sled. The dogs were nervous. They smelled the death and didn't like it. The leader whined and fidgeted and was glad when Russell called him around and headed north. 
Before he let them run, he turned back to Ugruk one more time. I will remember you, he said. Then let the dogs go. He would run north for a time, then cut across the ice and head northeast into the land. He had weapons and dogs and a good sled. The rest would come from the land. Everything would come from the land.